Uh, when I turned um, 58 years old, uh, I felt that it would be appropriate to study Isaiah chapter 58. So I'm just going to pull out a few points out of there um, for you. I find Isaiah 58 to be one of the most challenging chapters in the Bible. Challenging to me personally. I don't know how you'll find it. But I suggest you take the chapter, read it. Uh, read it out aloud is good. You will get more out of it if you read it silently and read it out aloud. Particularly read it out aloud. Um... But let's take a few points out of it. And the thing I really want to address here is what's happening in this in this chapter is that they're fasting. Now, fasting always goes together with prayer. So they're fasting and praying for some kind of desired result or results. And they're not getting the results that they desire. That's That's really the context of what's going on here in this chapter. Uh, so, you know... Who, we have times like that sometimes that we where we're fasting and praying about something. Fasting will, it, in my guesstimation, will multiply the power of your prayer about ten times. So whatever you're praying for, if you fast as well, if you add fasting to that, um, it it will yeah. You to me, it's just a guesstimate, but I think it multiplies the power of your prayer by about ten times. So fasting is very powerful. Uh, we won't go into all details about fasting and all that at the moment but suffice to say that the new testament says that christians will fast in the new testament um so it's appropriate for us uh but you know this is where you're fasting and praying but you're not getting the result you're not getting the breakthroughs you're not getting the victories and then you're not seeing the desired result come to pass and so they ask the lord about this and then he addresses it and from verse 3 uh, one of the first things he said is that I will tell you why I responded is because you are fasting to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. So the first thing is you're fasting to please yourself is selfishness. Is there a is there an issue with selfishness in our life? So are we fasting really just for very selfish reasons? Have we got major issues with just being a very selfish person and and if that's the case you know the lord will be wanting to address that and so selfishness can hold back that uh breakthrough from you let me just say this in relation to all these points is that we can be you know in the middle of some kind of test or trial we can feel that the devil's attacking us a combination of those things uh whatever uh, but sometimes um a test or a trial or an attack of the devil is prolonged because there's issues that we have in our behavior and in our heart attitude that need to be dealt with. And so sometimes, you know, it's something going on in us that is causing us not to get the breakthrough. And so when you read through Isaiah 58, let God probe your heart about these things. So the first thing is selfishness could be holding back, could be holding things back. Uh, and he says, you keep oppressing your workers. Now, we're not all employers. Some of you may be, but when most of us are not, you know, statistically. Um, but we still can't oppress other people. Husbands can oppress their wives or the other way around. You know, we can oppress other people in our family. We can oppress our neighbor. We could oppress people at work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and all sorts of different situations. Uh, so if we're oppressing other people in some other way, you know, with our attitude with our behavior then that could be holding back things in your in your prayer life that you're praying for and fasting about um the next verse verse 4 he said what good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling this kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me so he's talking about fighting and quarreling and of course along with that goes anger so, you know, is, is there an issue with anger and fighting and quarreling in your life? One thing about humans, human nature, is that I think we've got to face is that if we're going to be realistic about human traits, is that humans have a tendency to want to fight. And so we need to face that as, about ourselves and, and deal with that. Um, and we haven't got time to talk about all that in detail either today, but 
suffice to say this that anger fighting and quarreling could be holding back you know your breakthrough and so if those things are going on in your life ask the lord to come and help you with it ask him to give you grace to overcome those things and and repent of it and begin to work on those things and say hey you know i recognize that this in my life you know many of us our self-awareness is is not good we tend to see all the faults in other people but we have many blind spots about our own uh, issues and and weaknesses and vulnerabilities and and uh, sin issues basically sins in our lives um, and so we need to be more willing to actually see where we're wrong about things see where our behavior is wrong and identify it otherwise you don't change you know you've really got to be like the people at the AA meeting that the first step is admit that you're an alcoholic <coughs> you know we've got to admit some things in our lives where we got it wrong or we we're getting it wrong that's the first step and then ask the lord to uh, come and um, uh, help us with it uh, so anger so selfishness oppressing other people anger fighting and quarreling uh, verse 6 speaks about deliverance this is the kind of fasting i want free those who are wrongly imprisoned lighten the burden of those who work for you let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people and uh, he mentions that again in verse 9 where he says remove the heavy yoke of oppression stop putting your finger and spreading vicious rumors he, he's talking about yokes and we'll get to the other pointing finger thing in a minute but he's talking about removing uh yokes of oppression a yoke was something they put over animals to make them work for them in the old days um, and he's talking about removing these things and removing chains and oppression and stuff this really speaks a lot about deliverance it can be in a natural too just helping people who are oppressed in a natural just in our in, in the world around us and that's true too there's times when we need to do that but also fasting is collected with deliverance and you'll see that uh, in the new testament where the disciples couldn't cast a demon out of a boy who was falling onto the ground and having some kind of seizure fit type thing and it was a demon and uh you know jesus said this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting so prayer uh, fasting can be to do with other people's deliverance as well and us operating in deliverance so um and getting people free so your fasting can help other people to get delivered to have deliverance from demons so that's a notable point then verse 7 share your food with the hungry give shelter to the homeless give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help now sometimes we can end up doing that we can shut our heart out we can shut our heart against relatives you know they say you you can choose your friends but you can't choose your relatives and most of us you know we have uh relatives people that we're related to family wise um that that some people that we really don't like um and the lord's saying you know don't shut your heart you know against these people now there can be difficulties sometimes in family relationships but we don't want to shut these people out and you know I, i've faced these things in my life you will have faced these things in your life too and and some issues are very difficult um but you know we need to believe that god will bring healing of relationships and families and i believe the lord spoke to me recently in a prayer meeting to say that he did want to heal relationships in families so please take that and, and work with that and see what the lord's doing um it talks about generosity you know sharing your food with the hungry give shelter to the homeless give clothes to those who need them it's generosity having a generous spirit towards other people my dad was very much like he was a very very generous man i find all this challenging um personally challenging uh you know i i definitely personally have limits in these areas and stuff and i think one thing to say is that it's always good to exercise uh wisdom about who you open your home to if you're giving shelter somebody things like that you, that's worth giving thought to but also remember that um in the times in the time that this was written there was no welfare system and and in some countries of the world it's still like that now there's no welfare system so for instance if a relative of yours became a widow uh their breadwinner had died they could they and their family could starve so if you shut your heart out against them uh it, it, it you know you there's serious um consequences to that so in the time that it's written this is a very uh stark kind of thing you know people could 
you, you know, people could starve, people, you know, uh, they could end up begging, they could end up homeless, or, and of course people end up homeless today too. Um, maybe the background to that is a little bit different to what's happening here, but then in some ways maybe the same, and I mean, we haven't got time to go into all those sort of details. But it, it was really talking about not shutting out our heart to those in need and having a generous spirit and those sort of things. I want to mention actually missionaries in relation to this. You know, it's important to help support a missionary overseas somewhere in a country where they don't have a welfare society, where the need is much greater. So I, I just want to say that to you. Some, uh, our church um, supports a missionary, Kim Goodwin's ministry in Indonesia. Um, I'm not trying to justify myself or to clear myself righteous in that area, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, that's something that that is uh, that you really should be doing. Um, and then he goes through some verses talking about how quickly you'll be healed if you deal with these things, how quickly your breakthrough will come. And in verse 9, the one we looked at before, stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumors. Uh, you know, if you point the finger, um, there's three fingers pointing right back at you. So, you know, uh, we don't want to be um, spreading people who spread vicious rumors about people, speaking badly about people, speaking evil about people. We don't want to be singling out everybody's um, faults and all this kind of thing and just being big um, fault finders, you know, uh, we need to do better than that. And, you know, the Bible says that our longevity, how long we live our life, has a lot to do with what we do with our tongue, what words we speak and how we speak about people, and that we don't speak lies and repeat deception and, um, you know, repeat deception around the place. You need to be careful of that and uh, stick to the truth of God's word. And and uh, don't speak evil of, of people. Um, he says, feed the hungry and help those in trouble in verse 10. Um, so, and then he speaks about the Sabbath. And, you know, I'm not a legalistic Sabbath keeper. I don't believe in that. But I also have respect for people who who uh, enjoy the Sabbath and enjoy keeping the Sabbath and things like that, as long as they're not trying to bash me with that. Um because, you know, I, I observe what's customary in our culture, in our country, which is, you know, there's Sabbath keeping groups, but, you know, it's customary in New Zealand to normally observe, uh, to go to church and things on a Sunday. So I observe, you know, my Sabbath is observed on a on a Sunday generally. I like having a restful Saturday as well, if I can. Um, uh, and, of course, Sunday is somewhat of a work day to me, although it's enjoyable, good work, of course. Um but, you know, there is something about the Sabbath. You know, God rested on the seventh day. Now, if he rested one day out of seven, then you and I should rest too one day out of seven. And we should have a day, be it Saturday or Sunday or another day, we should have a day where that is put aside for gathering with the people of God, to fellowship with them, to worship together with them, and to have teaching of the word, and to have ministry of the Holy Spirit, and 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 the presence of God there, and all those sorts of things. I've got three um, messages on these videos about uh, the deeper truths of fellowship. So um, I really strongly suggest you listen to those. There's good um, things in there to know about, uh, that you need to know about fellowship. Uh, so he talks about that as well, about the Sabbath. So, you know, there's some things here where the Lord really faces us with them and says, hey, maybe the reason you're not getting your breakthrough with your prayer and fasting is some of these things. So read the chapter and let the Lord um, speak to you. God bless you.